Greetings, deeply loved children of God. Welcome to Storytime with Pastor Maureen. I am Pastor Maureen Howard of Emanuel Lutheran Church in Washington, Iowa, and I greet you with great joy as we come together to read stories of the Bible that tell us why God sent Jesus to rescue us, to save us. And the stories that we're reading are from the Advent Storybook. 25 Bible stories showing why Jesus came. And this book is written by Laura Ritchie and it's illustrated by Ian Dale. The story that we're on today is called Abram and God's Promise. And this is a story that is on day five of Advent. This is a story that is from the book of Genesis which is the first book in the whole Bible, the very first one, chapters 11 through 12 and chapter 15. Let's begin with a reading from Galatians, and that is a book in the Bible that's in the New Testament. And this is from chapter 3, verse 29. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs, according to the promise. Well, let's find out what we are heirs to, what promise has been given to us. And let's, so let's read the story. Abraham and God's promise. Noah taught his sons about God and the world. His sons had sons and grandsons of, of their own. One of these grandsons of grandsons was named Abram. God had a special plan for Abram. One day, God told Abram to leave his home. God promised that Abram would have a family that would become a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. In all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that comes from Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 through 3. But what is a blessing? A blessing is a gift of goodness from God a part of his plan to bring us closer to him. God promised to bless Abram. And then through Abram, all the families on earth would have the goodness too. That was a big, important promise. Abram tried to believe God's promise. He took his wife and all his possessions and went where God told him to go. But many years passed and still he and his wife had no children. God knew Abram was afraid. So he spoke to him again. God told Abram to look up and count all the stars shining in the sky. He told Abram that his family would be as many as the number of stars in the sky. And Abram stopped feeling afraid and believed God again. So let's look at the picture. And here's Abram. And he's out in the night and he's looking up at the sky. Oh my goodness, look at all of those stars. Can you count them? Oh, I sure couldn't. And look, here is the Milky Way and all of the stars that are in the Milky Way. That is a lot of stars. And God promised Abraham 
that the number in his family would be more than the number of stars in the sky. Do you know that you are counted as Abraham's offspring? Yes, you are. That's what the book of Galatians was saying. Let me read that again. And if you are Christ's, and you are, you belong to Jesus, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to his promise. That's right. You are an heir according to God's promise. You are an heir of Jesus. That's right. Jesus says to you and says to me that we are God's children. Isn't that fabulous that we are counted as one of those numerous stars in the sky that Abram had seen? And so the author Laura Ritchie asks us a question. Have you ever had to wait a long time for something? Have you ever had to wait? Remember, Advent is called waiting. And right now we're waiting to celebrate Jesus' birthday. But we know Jesus already has come. But God promises that Jesus will come again. And so we are now in Advent, in waiting for Jesus to come again. So what do you wait for that's taking a long, long time? Hmm. And then Laura Ritchie asks, and then Laura Ritchie asks, what do you do when you are waiting? What do you do when you're waiting? Do you look out the window and wait and wait for maybe grandma and grandpa to come? What do you do? Do you bake cookies while you wait? What do you do? What do you do when you wait? Well, we're waiting for a long time for Jesus to come again. And so we continue to wait, but we do our everyday things. We get up, we brush our teeth, we go to school, we do our work, we go and maybe watch TV, and we love our neighbors. That's what we do while we wait for Jesus. What do you do? Well, deeply love children of God, Jesus does love you. So let's on the count of three say, Jesus loves me. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves me. That's right. And Jesus loves everybody. Everybody. All those stars. Look at all of those stars. Every one of those stars represents somebody on the earth. And so God loves everybody. So let's, on the count of three, say Jesus loves our neighbors too. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves our neighbors too. Oh, yes. Martha and Adam and Eve and Frank, God says to you, I love you and Luna, and Willow, and Bella, and Sam, and James, God says to you, I love you. And Navy, and Mark, and Harold, God says to you, you are precious and an heir of my promise. And so deeply love children of God, have a grateful day today. And if this is a story that you're reading before you go to bed, well, then you have pleasant dreams as the stars above shine upon you, knowing that you're counted as one of those stars. So have a grateful day, and I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. for another Advent story from the Bible. Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.